Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at maximum. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You're wasting your energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Oh. Wow. Well, whoops. Turn that up a little bit loud. Anyway. Hello and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David. And joining <laughs> me today is Amy. Hello. Is Stuart. Hello. Is Eugene. Hello. And for the first time in a very, very long time, we have Michael. Hey, guys. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, is this supposed to be more dramatic than that? <laughs> yeah, Whoa. I, 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 was, I was doing my best Captain Kirk impersonation with the pauses <laughs> and the thinking <laughs> and the <laughs> dramatic acting. Anyway. Until you, until you face off against the Gorn, you can't be Captain Kirk. <laughs> I don't know. I face off against Stuart on a fairly regular basis. <laughs> oh, I love Stuart's response the most. Anyway, um, so this week we are talking about the season finales of all the different shows. So Arrow, Flash, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., DC Legends of Tomorrow, uh, Stuart, other shows, what were they again? Gotham. Gotham, yes. The, the show that I always forget about because it's Gotham. It actually had a really big twist for its ending, actually, so... Yeah. So, so. Anyway, let's let's just kick, kick it off and start with The Flash. <laughs> I, I full on geeked out. <laughs> Flashpoint. I, fu- I full on geeked out twice. Let's do it. You well, can't run fast point. enough to go back in time and create a time duplicate, time remnant. I hope, I hope not. <laughs> but it would explain well, a thing, lot. It wasn't. It wasn't just Flashpoint. There were three different comic books. Um, references that they did, three major comic lines that they referenced in that episode. There was the uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths, there was uh, the Black Flash, or the, or the Death Racer, and then obviously the Flashpoint Paradox. Black Flash? A Black Flash, or it's known, it's known as Death Racer, it, it's a speedster that appears before speedsters before they die. Okay. Barry actually briefly becomes that in the comics. Oh. Yeah, not not creepy at all. <laughs> so. but yeah, um, the reason why I say Black Flash is um, the symbol on Zoom's chest actually changed. It went from the the black symbol, but it changed to a white with a red um, lightning bolt, which is the Black Flash symbol. Huh. Well, maybe yeah. that's why well, they carried them up. off. I was say he never actually died. Uh, well, you never know. Yeah. They could have just defeated some time remnant and the real Zoom is off hiding somewhere, crying like a little bitch. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Well, we did see two well, Zooms. I mean, yeah. Well, you know, they also did confirm, um, however, whatever is going to end up happening next season, they did confirm that, um, that, um, God, I'm blanking on his name. Um, the v- Harrison Wells is going to be back. Yeah, yeah, the uh, yeah, the, the Mister Earth Two is coming back. Well, not necessarily, because if he reset the timeline, it could be the original Harrison yeah, well, Wells from the Earth One. It's especially what happened right at the end of the episode. Um. So yeah, yeah I wonder what the. Am I the only one that told that it was like no, no, Barry, stop, no, 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 <laughs> no? I did that no. too. 
It's like, oh, <laughs> that moment when I see him reappear back, they're like, oh, I've got a really bad feeling about this. <laughs> as soon as I saw the, the, the it was the thing I'm thinking, oh, crap. <laughs> they're like, doing I mean, it. Like, he, ju- he just undid everything that he's done up till now. Yeah. Like, why would you do that? Right after fin- fully, finally defeating Zoom, you go back and undo it all. Because his dad died was... and he couldn't handle losing both his parents. I I know, but <sighs> so well. All the work equals up to nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Now tell me this: Do you guys think that Earth Two will be affected? I think everyone's gonna get affected. Because, I mean, like, I mean, is Earth Two's timeline affected by what Barry's done in Earth One? I'll be intrigued to see what happens with Arrow. Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, get to Steve Arrow. Amell's... We'll get to Arrow. Stick to well, Flash. So Steve Amell already... No, this is relevant because Steve Amell already um, publicly said that he's almost certain that won't be any effect. Oh, boo. I tell you, it doesn't work that well, see, what I'm probably going to guess is what's probably going to happen is they'll do it for, se- for Season 3. Is that they'll do a similar thing they did with Season 2, first episode, where they'll do a time lapse. Yeah. So we'll probably miss it, but we'll Maybe. see flashbacks of it. Well, this what this might do is this might allow them... This might also be their way of bringing Supergirl into the CW universe. That's another thing as well. Yeah, Because that, this way they be can trick. reset the world. That because would... what is it? Isn't the original Flashpoint Paradox that involves Aqu- Aquaman and Wonder Woman, right? Yeah, and, and like everyone so, else. So this could be... Yeah, this could be their way to bring in Supergirl through that... Um, Instead of just having that parallel universe kind of thing. Well, they're already in talks to do a massive sort of four-way crossover oh, between doing all the, the shows, yeah, which is going to be spectacular. That's, no, no, that's confirmed. Yes, but the pro- that the, I think the reason that they did this Flashpoint Paradox is because of that. Because they already established that Supergirl is not in this universe, and that she's from a different universe. Therefore, in order to do that, they'd have to bring some major change in. Yeah. Could the Legends of Tomorrow go get her? That's, a, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah, well, I don't think so because that's that's all the time. That's time. That's not dimensions. Yeah, I don't know. And to be honest, Supergirl is so stupidly OP. It's, it's like the, one of the reasons I don't like um, the Superman and the Kryptonian sort of storylines is because of how OP they are. If we had a larger mystical presence in the CW verse, which we are sort of getting now then yeah, they're not as OP because against mystical sort of elemental stuff, they're crap. It's like they're, they're, they're kryptonite and mystical stuff and that's it. So I mean, I think the Supergirls... The Super, I haven't watched all of the Supergirls uh, season one yet, but I think that they've done a pretty good job of showing that she's not super power... Like, like the uh, uber-powerful you know, person. Well, they, they've done a decent job of sort of saying that she's not god-level, but at the same yeah. time... She's bulletproof. She's super strong. She's super fast. She can vaporize things. She's been demonstrated to use solar flare. Um, so she's got all of Superman's abilities. And Superman is effectively a god. It's just, just the way that Superman works. So if she's got all of his abilities, even to 90% of the way there, 90% of infinite is still effectively infinite. So This is true. Yeah. So I stand by her being ludicrously OP. Because mm. so, I think that's what... There's only a handful of things that entire season that actually managed to do some damage to her. So, anyway. So. <laughs> Arrow. I didn't care for Arrow finale. <laughs> I did not care at Oh. Yeah. It wasn't the best. It certainly wasn't. That that was the that was probably the weak weakest finale. Like I would have taken season three finale over that. Yeah. I'm just sick of the bad guy of the week. <laughs> Sorry, not bad guy of the week, bad guy of the season. Well, I mean the problem is that means that they either have to do a bat like a multiple season arc, or they have to do an episode uh, a monster of the week. And the problem is monster of the week is boring and 
multiple season arcs kind of are like, what do you do next if you have two seasons or three seasons of one arc? And then after that, what do you do next? So you kind of have to decide, you know. Yeah, well, to be honest, everybody I'm has just, their preferences. I'm sick of that city being destroyed every year. So seriously, <laughs> if you lived in a city that was destroyed every year, and, you would live there for the about point. a week. And just that was like, kind no, of the point of the, end, of the finale, was that the people who are left clearly cared so much that, you know, they're not going to quit. Yeah, they fucking should. They do at least address it. They address it more, oh, than, I'm not saying they address it more than, like, the Marvel Universe did. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> saying they don't address it, but um, that whole mm-hmm. ending almost felt like the back half of the season meant nothing. Felicity and Oliver, while they're not together together, they're the only two left. He's now mayor because write-in votes? Seems legit. Um, seriously, no one well, ever no, gets... no, no, no. No he's, one gets he's 48... He was appointed. No one gets 48% of the write-in votes. I'm sorry, that's not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> and to that's be honest... Got write-in votes. <laughs> and to be honest, considering... Uh, okay, I might be totally ignorant of the American political system. I won't disagree that I'm only, the only one I'm really exposed to is the one in Australia. But when you're going for mayor and it's unchallenged, when do they have a vote for that? They still, there's always a vote. So they vote for one candidate? Seems or you can write in Mickey if you want. S- still. If you don't like the one candidate running, you can write in Mickey Mouse. Yes, you have to be able to give an opinion other than the one who is running for mayor or any official elected position. You always have a vote no matter what. Well, over here, they just win by default. No one's willing to challenge them. Like, don't get me wrong, almost always someone's willing to challenge them. But if no one does, it's sort of a default. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, if there's nobody challenging some, nobody challenging the running candidate, then, of course, you know, very few people go out and vote in those respects. But, you know... We have to. I mean, there, there's legally we should we have, have to. to. No, no, legally we have to. In Australia, you have to vote. No, I, I understand. I'm saying we should. I, you know, I mean, I'm kind of a mixed opinion, but either way, um, the point is that we still, you know, very less, much less people come out to vote for somebody who's running unopposed because they're unopposed. So, it's no yeah, exactly. But anyway, okay, we're off we, topic. Let's get back. Yeah, no, no. Um, it's just, it, it just came across as sort of a, oh yeah, we're going to make you mayor because you ran, but you pulled out because you were threatened because reasons, and then you got 48% I mean, look, of they got to have somebody as mayor. Vote, and now you're mayor because have fun with that. And he's like, okay, cool, that happened. I mean, they, the one they, could thing be, they could be like the Alaskans who elected a cat for mayor for the last few terms. <laughs> No, my my um, you know how the, how the team will split up and stuff is. Where is Tia gonna go? That's a good question. Maybe back to the league. The league's gone. No, the league got disbanded. Oh, that's right. You know what? I mean, hey, the 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 Legends of Tomorrow crew is down one person. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Yeah. And that's they just... already have they already have Sarah. Yeah. That could add. That could add us uh, another. Oh, and no, they're down three people. They're down Snart, Carter, and um, <laughs> and Kendra. Yeah. So they need. They could use another female character. Yeah. yeah. Sarah could reach out to her, seeing that she's had a similar situation, and invite her to join them. Nah, I reckon they're gonna add Supergirl. I don't think they're gonna add Supergirl to the Legends of Tomorrow group. I mean, she could have single-handedly taken on Savage. She could have single-handedly taken on Savage and just carried him into the sun and said, just enjoy your immortality while you're <laughs> constantly burned in nuclear fusion. <laughs> uh, just, just imagine while, like, Ray is fighting that giant robot that Supergirl swoops in, punches the head off, and that's it. Yeah. No, she wouldn't even do that. She'd just sort of stand in front of it, clap her hands, and just blow forwards, and it's, boop, it's, it's, <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> Ray just be like, what the shit? <laughs> I will say I have to say I I loved that fight when Ray just like finally like just got massive and just got yeah. into it was almost like the rock and sock and robots you know yeah well I actually think um the because 
Ant Man and Atom have both be were both sort of seen on screen about the same time. Um, I think Atom has stolen almost every piece of Ant Man's thunder. Every time Ant Man's going to go do a thing, Atom seems to do it first. <laughs> yeah, this is true. So it's kind of funny. I think the only advantage yeah. Adam has is unlike um unlike uh that he can fly. Yeah, he can fly. I was better say he's he's got he's sort of halfway between Ant Man and Iron Man. This is true. Mind you, I still think Power oh. just stole Iron Man's tech. <laughs> yes, Power Rangers. Still think who? Power Ranger stole Iron Man's tech. <laughs> Wait, who did? Power Rangers. Oh, Ant- Power Rangers. Ha. Yeah. Yeah. So, um... I mean, guys, come on. What, what if we saw Ant-Man's technology put in the Iron Man suit and had a giant Robert Downey Jr.? No, we don't need that. <laughs> no, we don't need that. Oh. <laughs> well, that'd be funny. <laughs> I, I could see him... <laughs> okay. I could see the scenario now. He is giant Iron Man. He is leaning on the top of Warner Brothers Studio, drinking alcohol out of their giant water buddy tower, like it's a <laughs> wine glass. I could see him doing that. Yeah, unfortunately, so could I. <laughs> and knowing him, he'd make like micro fucking alcohol tablets. So it's like the entire vat of alcohol shrunk down into a one tiny little tablet, and he just has one, and he's drunk for life. <laughs> anyway um, so moving on to Legends of Tomorrow now I know somebody here was stupidly excited by the end of that he was <laughs> see like I said somebody was stupidly excited by the end of that Look, I'm happy. why was he so stupidly excited JSA Friggin' Justice Society of America? Mm-hmm. Why would you not be happy that we have a, li- a live-action JSA again? <laughs> we, had it, we had it on Smallville, and now it's back again. I'm, ha- I'm so happy. I would love to Do see think... this series tie into Smallville. I don't think it's going to tie into Smallville. No, 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 I'm just saying it'd be... It might make a reference or two, but I don't think it'll tie in. No, no, no I, mean, I meant um, Supergirl. I'd like to see Super, oh. Supergirl tie into Smallville. Mm. Because they can get... I mean, a, do you guys they, think that... What? Yep, go. No, no, go ahead, you finish. No, I was going to say, because they've, they've got the breathing room to do that, and that would flesh out and they'd flesh out a lot of the story. Just yeah. like adding Just Constantine say, you... into Arrow. True. Which was I fucking mean, awesome. That would be... If they decided to eventually, um, you know, merge kind of the four of them to get all four of those series together and, like, turn it into just a society of America, um, like, I don't know, that would be an interesting combination because of the different tone of multiple of the series. Yeah. Well, we said that last week. We said it's like, with the Marvel movies, the reason their movies do so well is because every different main character movie is a different sort of theme to it. Um, this is true. Whereas, one of the things that DC's done is it's just given the same theme to all of their movies. Uh, it's just dark and brooding. That's their theme, and they sort of run with it for every single movie. And they've just, just only just sort of realizing that that may not be the best move after two failed Superman movies that were Batman movies. Um, yeah. One of which was a Batman movie, I should say. So, they're a little bit sort of... The movie side of DC is finally working that out. But Flash, Arrow, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow, they all did that from the beginning, where each show, while being the same universe, has got a totally different feel to it. So Arrow is dark and brooding. Flash is substantially more lighthearted. Supergirl is probably even more lighthearted than that. And Legends of Tomorrow is Doctor Who. With superheroes. It is. It just, it just is. It really is. It really is. It's Doctor That's Who. Great. It's Doc, it's, no, no, no. That. Actually, it's Doctor Who with superheroes if the Doctor had a stalking complex. And he's just stalking <laughs> someone like through all of time and space. 
It's the doctor stalking the master. Yeah. No, no, ah, that's it? even better. Legends of Tomorrow is the story of the early master as he stalked the doctor through time and space. <laughs> that's better. I like that way. That way's, that way's better. I'm, I'm happy with that. <laughs> so, yeah. But I must admit, the... Oh, um, I must admit, the Wave Rider looks very familiar. The ship design? I never actually mentioned this. I was watching Stargate Atlantis the other day. The Wave Rider looks really similar to the Asuran Corvette. The, the smallest what? ship used by the Replicators. I have to look this up now. I don't... Yeah. Yeah, have a look. I'll, I'll, I'll post two pictures in the... In the Skype chat. Just give me two seconds. Um, you look up the Wave Rider, I'll look up the Assyrian Corvette. Alright. But yeah. You done? <laughs> the Wave Rider results on, fa on uh, Google Images are all completely non related. Yeah, that's why <laughs> whenever you do a search for something, bring up. Um, let's see, that's why I go to episodes. I'll just type in Legends of Tomorrow. That'll yeah, probably... I did that. That worked better. Okay, so that's the Surin Corvette. Um, where the hell is the the chat? There it is. I'll post it in the chat for all of our no listeners. <laughs> there you go, chat. Enjoy the picture. All right, I just sent you guys the link to the. It's actually a GIF, but it's got a good view of it. I mean, I guess I see some similarities, but I don't know if I'd say it's that similar. Yeah. It's... You got a really weird angle of it. I don't know. I it almost in some ways shares something with the Millennium Falcon. The front of it, the front, the design in the front is similar to the cargo uh, loading part of the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. Much more, I think, than this Soren Corvette. If I find a better shot. Now, I, I don't mean it always looks like it, but this is just there's. When you look at it from the side or from the back, it reminds me very oh, heavily of the Assyrian Corvette. I see it. I see it from the bottom. It does kind of look like that. If I look at the bottom, yeah, here, like, um, let me let me share this with you guys. Yeah. If you look at the bottom, there we go. I just sent it to the chat. It does. It does share some similarities from the bottom. Yeah. So, um, and the engines look very similar as well. But I could not be stuffed finding a picture of. The engines of the Surin ship. But yeah, and, but as soon as I saw the Wave Rider, I first thought was, Ooh, a Surin technology, this should be interesting. <laughs> so yeah. so what did you guys think about the uh, the death in the series? The death in the series. Oh, sort of annoyed that they didn't bring her back. Bring what? Yeah, but, you can, but now we know why, though, because he's doing Prison Break. Yeah. Wait, what? Oh, you don't know? The re there's, uh, Fox, is Fox is bring back Prison Break. F the reason that um, Snark had to leave was because he's... Now oh, oh, the actor. Yeah, the actor is in uh -huh. another season of Prison Break. So that's why I he see. had to leave and drop back to... Um, sort of, lack of a better way of putting it, part-time in this series. But at least... So, yeah. Um... Do you think they're going to use him at all in the series anymore? Um, yes, he is, he is contracted to come back for a couple episodes next year. Really? Yeah. Interesting. So he, I mean, he's contracted for like, Arrow, Flash, and Legends. I guess they could still easily do it for Arrow and Flash. They could say it's before the people left. Yeah. But but I think Legends should be interesting. So uh, Whether he appears in all three shows, I don't know, but that's what he's contracted for. Okay. So. Everyone's pretty much left um, Star City. That's not making an interesting city. How could it be called the city anymore? Yeah, yeah. yeah um, if everyone leaves Star City, that is a very good point. Star. Uh, 
Star Town? Star Rubble? <laughs> Star Rubble City? Well, I hate... I mean, hey, you know, season the next season of, of Arrow supposedly is going to be focusing more in the city again, and not like some global catastrophe. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, see, I don't want it to focus on the city. I want Arrow to move away from Star City for a couple of seasons. I, I want say instead of it focusing on Star City, have two or even three seasons where he is traveling around the world more. So that Star City gets a fucking break. <laughs> it's a sad time in a way. Yeah. So I mean, I, what I'm wondering is when are they going to stop the flashbacks? Because the there's flashbacks only so are much over. time you can... They're done. No, no. Still, no, 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 he still has the Russian Mafia. So it's the Russian Mafia? Yeah. All I know is that they are going to do more flashbacks next season. Oh, God. Back in episode one, he was speaking Russian, and, and um, it's like... I didn't know you could speak Russian. It's like, I learned a lot of things in my time on the island. What what that's code for is that he left the island, went to Russia, and joined the Russian Mafia. Ah, well, this season will have something to do with the Russian Mafia then, because it'll... Yeah, because have... he's going to Russia. Yeah. So. So, yeah. Um, I, still, I still do want to know how he got left on the island in the very end. How he escaped the island? No, 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 how he, he gets back to the island. At the very yeah, end, like, when he's all haggard with the beard and everything? Yeah. That's true. Because if he'd left the island, why would he be back? Exactly. So there's some reason that he ends up on that island at the very end well, see, that's, of his time there. When she gave him his gear back at the end of that episode, I assumed that was her dumping him on the island, and that's that's it. He's stuck on that island. No, there are more, definitely more flashbacks. I know I read it somewhere. Oh, God. Enough with the fucking flashbacks. I kind of like the flashbacks. I, mean, I do, too, as long as it ties in. But the thing is, like, all the flashbacks, of course, are always related to, directly related to what happening that season. Like, sometimes shouldn't we have flashbacks that are, like, just things brought up by memory and not specific to the villain? Yeah. If, 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 if the flashbacks are meant to represent him having severe PTSD then they really should just link to other things. Now, my question is, with the time reset, will that bring back Laura? No, Laurel is done. No, She's not Laurel's coming back. Gone. Yeah. Poor Laurel. So yeah. here's, the question so I, here's the question I have. Because I have Black Siren locked up on Flash, will that do something? Yeah. What do you mean? Well, because these reset uh, the time... On Flash, um, Earth 2 Laurel I, well, I, is evil? No, I know that. I know that. But I'm saying, what? I mean, if, if it resets time, then shouldn't she just not be there anymore? Well, it depends. If it resets time, then Earth 2 may have still come through to Earth 1. We don't know. We don't know what the ripple effect is of the the time. We well, just know remember, that it, was, it, was Barry, it was Barry that opened the portal between the universes. Yeah. So if things like that never happened, uh, Wells... Or uh, Eobard Thawne never went ahead and killed his mother. He stopped Eobard Thawne. Then why would he have ever created that black hole in the first place? Yeah, and then how would he get his powers? This is true. Well, no, Harrison Wells in that universe was was doing a particle accelerator as well. Yeah. It just may we'll have taken we'll longer. We'll find out more, come look on. <laughs> yeah, we'll find out more. <laughs> so anyway. Th- that sort of covers the Arrow Flash Legends finales, it sort of. Um, overall, finale score out of 10, uh, Flash, go. Oh, no, 9. 9. 9. Yep. I, I would give it. I'll go 9. I'll give it an 8. Give it an 8. Eugene? I'll go 9. 9? Okay. I'm overruled if we're giving it a 9 out of 10. Um. <laughs> Okay, arrow out of ten, go. Or is there a don't care? <laughs> is there a don't care? <laughs> I, I would say four or five. It was just uh, it was just a weak weak. The only the only cool thing in the finale was was the mob fight in the middle of the city. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. I had a Deadpool moment when that scene first started. I was like, oh, the studio couldn't afford any more extras to represent <laughs> the millions of people that live in this city. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> So, but what a, that that whole scene reminded me of was it Spider Man? Which it was one of the Spider Man movies, where all the New Yorkers, where the Spider Man has caught the cars under the bridge, and all the New Yorkers oh, are throwing yeah. all the shit at the bad guy, and the bad guy's like, yeah, seriously. And what's his face? The uh, dark goes um, from. Haha, I am invincible, and look at this as I casually force push over everybody from a distance. Haha, look how strong I am. A second ago, I could vaporize people, but now I can only do force push. Oh no! He, he can't resist my magic now. I have become... I... Damn, this performance under pressure. It already ever happens one to thing... men. The, only, the one thing <laughs> I'll say, that, the one thing I give, I'll give to Arrow this season, near the end of the season, was... They actually did something serious, all right? They had a nuke actually wipe out tens of thousands of people. Yeah. Now that's what something is... that I that none of the other shows have done. It's something that huge of a disaster that actually happens and gives you some ramifications there, you know? Yeah. Well, hopefully, there's more ramifications than oh yeah, if that city was nuked. Hmm. Why was that city nuked? Oh, someone hacked into the satellite and redirected it. Hmm. Felicity, you're now <laughs> responsible for killing tens of thousands of people. Well, I mean, I hope I hope that. it stays on her conscience in the next season because you know it did briefly in this season, but then it kind of went away. Yeah, I suspect it's going to be a sweep under the rug deal. Well, yeah. there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that happen in this in Arrow that are really sort of important to the story at that exact minute, and then ten minutes later, everyone forgets. Yeah. So, and there's other things which mean absolutely nothing that seem to ripple through just forever. So, whatever. Random selective memory is random. So, anyway. <laughs> Legends of Tomorrow finale, out of 10. I don't need to ask to it. I know he's going to give it a 10. So... <laughs> I, no, I would I'm say... Gonna... Huh? I'm going to say an 8. Oh, shock result from the Stuart. I would say seven. Yeah, I would. I would give it a, a, average, above average, so about seven. And I'm going to go with a seven also. Yeah. So Stewart is overruled, and it's a seven. <laughs> I can. Agree. I can. I can live with that. <laughs> the ending was the ending that the ending with the, you know, that very ending of the episode was really good, and Snart's death was, um was a very touching moment, but the rest of the episode was still kind of... Yeah. Uh, it, it was good, it just wasn't fantastic like The Flash. Okay, season overall scores for these three shows. So, all the highs, all the lows, boil them down. Out of ten, what do you give them as a season overall? Starting with which one? Whatever. Dealer's choice. Okay, Michael. I'll say all I'll three. Say, do, do all three. I'll Michael. say flash. All right, I'll say flash. Seven and a half. Um, like it was, it was good, but of course there were always some down moments. Um, Arrow. Uh, five or six. Um, Legends of Tomorrow. Seven. Yep. Yeah. I would go flash. Solid seven. It had moments that were predictable and moments that were very sort of oh that's pretty cool, but for the most part it wasn't sort of over the top. Um, oh, the hell could I forget to mention? Wow, Stuart. Did we need to get Gotham? No, we'll get to Gotham in a minute. It's Gotham. No one cares about Gotham. Um, <laughs> the man in the mask. We all made predictions on who it was, and it was revealed. Who the man in the mask oh, yeah. was? Did anyone was anyone right? I don't think I don't uh, think we were. Yeah, I think Just someone like said his us... dad, but I don't think anyone said that it's actually a different that... Flash. <laughs> so <laughs> when he had the when he had the gear on, oh, did I have throwbacks? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything comes full circle. Oh, yeah. 
So anyway, I just wanted I to really... mention that before I forgot about it again. Um, Arrow was, f- to be honest, Arrow's fell off a cliff a couple of seasons ago, so I'll give it a solid four. Um, Legends of Tomorrow That's far- was an interesting concept that was executed relatively well, so I'll give that a seven. Uh, Stuart, go. Back to Arrow. Yep. Back, back to, to Arrow. Arrow quickly. We we did uh, we did also make predictions at whose grave it was before Laurel passed away. Did any of us get that right either? Um, I don't think so. No, I, I think we all said it wasn't going to be Laurel. <laughs> yeah. We thought it was yeah. his son. Yeah, we. I, yeah, that I, was that was my prediction. Yeah, same. Um, so moving right along. Um, Stuart, out of ten, go. Uh, Arrow just didn't really care. <laughs> yeah. Arrow's getting like that. Arrow's reached the point where I only watch it in case it ties in with Flash. That's pretty much it. That's that's mm-hmm. the only reason I watch pretty Arrow much. now. Uh, Legends of Tomorrow, I'll give a solid 7, and Flash, I'm going to give an 8. Yeah, sweet. Amy? Um, sorry... I've been doing other stuff, college work and that. Oh, that's fine. It's, un- it's understandable. Eugene? I'm giving them all sevens um, because I I actually enjoyed all, all of them. Yeah, there was points in them that I thought were a bit weak, but there were points that I enjoyed on all of them. Uh, so seven across the board it is. Um, cool. So let's move on to uh, yeah, Age of the Shield because no one cares about Gotham. <laughs> oh, eh? <laughs> so let's see what the Marvel vs. is doing. Had a really <laughs> big mer- uh, ra- ma- uh, Gotham had a big shocker at the end. It did. We'll get back to it. It's only Gotham. I have to actually watch Gotham for the, in the first place, so. Yeah. See? I must be like the only one that watches it. I watch it. I mean, I haven't kept up with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. either. Not since the middle of the second season. I have just haven't gotten around to watching oh, well, it all. Oh, you'll be behind. Yeah, th- just don't worry. You haven't missed that much. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has been about as strong as Arrow. Really? Yeah. Ah, oh, that's depressing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the big focus now is on, on the Inhumans. Exactly. Yeah, and I was Which looking is... forward to seeing Sky be a bigger character. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, Age of the Shield, what do we think? We'll just go s- skip the finale review and we'll just cover the whole season. Ex- wait, uh, no, uh, back up for two seconds. We won't skip the finale review. We'll jump straight to the death. Did anyone Lincoln. guess the death right? Coulson? Lincoln. Did anyone guess Lincoln? I don't think we did. I did not. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, they have to. Ki- of course, they had to kill the Aussie off. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Come on, guys. This is America here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We the, the Aussies show Americans up in everything we do, so they've got to get back at us somehow. So they <laughs> kill us off in every TV show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your red shirts to us. Exactly. So. <laughs> Explains why you send the Australian military in to do jobs that the American military can't do. And then we win. <laughs> I have a couple just, of Marines. Just, just to, like just, to have a word for the record, <laughs> to the NSA person who is listening to this call, it's okay, I'm joking. I know that the NSA yo, doesn't David. get sarcasm, but it is. <laughs> yo, yo, David, David, it's Memorial Day. <laughs> it is? Whoops. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, I don't. <laughs> I, uh, if you wish to uh, send, if you wish to send hate mail, please send it to David Bax at save sci fi dot com. Yeah. That is not a real email address. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. It's not a real email address. Hey, let, let's uh, let's 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 distance yeah, ourselves from Dave right now. <laughs> Egg, quit while you're ahead. <laughs> anyway, just for the record, that is not a real email address. Moving right along. Um, yeah, so they killed off Lachlan. It was a little bit like, yeah, they had to kill someone off to actually make it seem like someone can die in that series because no one has. Well, at least none of the hero guys. Okay. But we also knew it probably wasn't going to be one of the main te- mainstay people. So, yeah. Didn't one of the heroes die in season two? Um. Oh, the 
the sub they they're not they they are the, okay. The heroes do heroes. die, but they're not the main heroes. They're always secondary characters. Yeah. So. Which is how he came in to begin with. Yeah, exactly. So, anyway, um. So yeah, that, on the plus side, Scar Sky can't charge her phone wherever she is now. She's got to use a little socket like everybody else. Well, he's an electric guy. He could charge a phone on the go. Just <laughs> force lightning. <laughs> It's not the only thing you could charge. Giggity, giggity, giggity. <laughs> not the point. Okay, so the next question is, who do we think the new director is? What happened to Coulson? Well, the, at the very end of the episode, he references a new director. Who do we think it is? I don't know. Other than Fury? Who knows? No. Also, do you think, could could they bring could in... Um... Agent May? Uh, it could be May. No, no, no. I think that... No, no. I think they're going to bring yeah. in... um. Sharon Carter. Ooh, Sharon. that'd be pretty cool. That yeah, would work. So, anyway, um, overall for the season, what would we give Shield out of ten? A um, meh. Yeah, I would give it a uh, solid five I... or six. I'm at the point where I just don't give them numbers. I'm just like, it's either meh or. <laughs> yeah. So, so how many Stuart heads do we give this season? Meh. <laughs> they get a meh head. Good for them. On the no group, so. <laughs> you say he's a meh head? Yeah, meh. Sounds a little like meth head, but okay. Have you seen his Skype picture? <laughs> oh come on, it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Just me, like Captain Boomerang outfit. <sighs> so, anyway, uh, Eugene, I'll give it a. I'll give it a six, but that's subject to go to a three if they pull the same crap they pulled last year and make the Blu-rays only available on Amazon and they jack the prices up. Fair enough. Totally understandable. So, Anyway, uh, we'll cover Gotham really quickly, then it'll be time to do the model report. So, Gotham, out of ten, go. Uh, I enjoyed Gotham because it, it showed a lot of the villains, like it, the backstory for a lot of them. So I'm giving it a uh, a six. Generous, generous. I expected a seven out of you, but six, yeah. And I don't, has anyone else? Uh, I know Eugene has. Nope, I've only seen season one. Ah, well, I don't blame you for that. Me, I'm going to give Gotham a solid four. <laughs> It just, it's reached that point where either something has to happen to put the show in gear, which is what the finale sort of seems like it's done, but it's mm. it's just becoming very sort of retread, retread. No new, no story points are really being finished. They're only sort of just being pushed along casually, and it's just, yeah, it seems stupendously bloated. It's like part one of The Hobbit if it went for two years. I'm sure that's Hobbit. The one, I'm that's sure the, the Hobbit would problem. appreciate that. Eugene, go. That's the one problem. That's the one problem with the Gotham series is they're covering the time frame from when his parents are killed till when he becomes Batman. Well, in that time frame, you know he's still a kid through a lot of it, and still trying to work through things. Yeah, there's things going on, but. He doesn't become Batman until much later, and then, and then that's what, what what a lot of people want to see. Yeah, well, see, I don't even want to see that. I like some of the backstories, but what it feels like is it feels like, um, to me at least, that I couldn't care less about Bruce Wayne, the character Bruce Wayne in Gotham. I could not give a shit about the the main character. And Harvey, I, I do care about those two guys. I want them to, to sort of win at the end of the day because they're the two heroes of the show, for the most part. Um, but a lot of it is just establishing stuff, and you can't build a show off establishing. If you spend three years establishing characters, because oh look, they're going to their character arcs are going to be finished ten years, fifteen, twenty years later in a Batman series. 
to me, that seems like a waste. They've got the potential yeah. to sort of do so much more with it than that, and they're missing out on that potential. How they'd go about reaching that potential, I honestly don't know, but it just feels like it's all set up, no payoff. And that's the I problem think, with Gotham. I think they're uh, setting up the characters too early, like, for what they're doing, for Gotham. Like, the Joker and that don't really become that until after Batman shows up. Yeah. So. If you follow the true storyline. Yeah. Like, the Joker becomes Joker because of Batman. Exactly. So, anyway, that about covers it for the reviews of the season finales, I think. Anyone else got any final comments? Nope. No. Bring on Comic Con for news. <laughs> so, we'll jump over to Eugene's model report. What have you got for us this week? Uh, well, this week I'm actually doing more of a hobby report. And for anybody who enjoys reading Star Trek novels, um, I'm specifically covering the sets of novels that were done by Stephen Fender and were available through Kickstarter over a period of time. He did books that were based on the old Star Trek spaceflight chronology and the old Fossa Star Trek game. Nice. He did. He did a set of three Romulan War novels, and he did a set of four um, Four Year Wars novels. Cool. So and the, I provided the, the Romulan stuff is the Romulan War takes place just after Enterprise, and the Klingon War yeah. takes place just before about, the original series. Correct. About ten years before the original series. Yeah. Yes. It's about the same point that Axanar is looking at touching on. Yes. Now. Um, I've provided a link to his website where he has the books available for free download that people can can read them because anyone who didn't back the project due to all the interesting things going on with Paramount and CBS right now, he w w is not allowed to sell them um, except to those that back the Kickstarters. Yeah. But for those... But for those that did back the Kickstarter, I've also provided a picture of the 20 patches that he made available. And there's very few full sets out there. I'm one of the lucky few that has a full set of the patches. Yeah, and it looks, because, it looks really good. It really does. Super yeah. jealous. I hate you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Yep. Um, there's also two coins, or well, there's um, one coin, on the, and I show both the front and back in the picture, and a little keychain in the picture, and then at the top is a bookmark that he also produced. Uh, the books are pretty good. The Four Years' War is broken down. Each book is one year. Um, but like I said, they're available... And he's got multiple formats up there, so it doesn't matter if you have Kindle or if you read if you have PDF formats or Microsoft Word. There's all kinds of different formats out there. Nice that you can read them. And the tech manual he did, which shows the ships of both series, is also out there, so you can see a lot of what he put together for this. Very nice. Mm-hmm. And this report is brought to you by Perry County Hobbies. And if anybody comes out to ooh, the Harrisburg Comic Con in a week and a half, um, I will have some extras of the patches with me. Nice. So make sure you keep an eye out and pick them up. It's going to be good. So, Michael, why are you not going to that event? Because I have a limited amount of time and money, and... <laughs> That's excuses. Um, we don't no, want like, excuses, seriously. we want results, damn it. <laughs> I'm, tr I'm still trying to get into shore leave. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to make a shore leave, so I really... Like, this trip to Austin Con is, it was very last minute. I wasn't going to do it originally, but then... Um, 
Yeah. Somebody else wanted to do it, so yeah, it's it's fine. I'm, I'm just I'm just stirring it because I can. Now what he's not yeah, saying is I'm used to it. <laughs> now what he's not saying is I could have gotten him into um, the Harrisburg Comic Con pretty much at no cost. See, all he would have had to do is work my booth. Yeah, I know, but I don't have time. Oh, and see, he no, I'm about to start classes tomorrow. One of these days, I'm going to bring my TARDIS over there and solve all of your problems. But until then, I'm going to keep it for myself so I can keep messing Please with history. Please do. <laughs> messy with history. Are you One of these... Hey, can I, can I ask, anyway. um, Moving on to Stuart? Can I just ask... Oh yeah, Stuart. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. No, no, go, go ahead, Michael. I was just going to ask, Stuart might mention this anyway, so like, go ahead, let Stuart do it. Yeah. Stuart? Oh? It's time for the news. And just before the news, Star Trek Beyond Spoiler, potentially spoiler-ishness, read an article the other day uh, that was talking about the giant uh, space station from Star Trek yes, Beyond. Yes, Yorktown. Yeah. Did you read the same thing, Michael? Yes. I did. Yeah. So basically, so. that thing is effectively the Babylon Five space station. Effectively, yeah, I I shared that, and then you liked it. Yeah, that's probably where I read it. I can't remember. I was paying that much attention. Yeah. So yeah. so effectively, <laughs> it's effectively the Babylon Five space station. Um, and the movie and it's starts. Massive. Yeah, the movie starts off. Um, with the Enterprise docking there for the first time in years. Um. Of being in space. About a year. It's, it's quite. A, I can't remember. It's, it's a while. Point is, first time in ages, it's it's docking there, and um, everyone's sort of leaving for shore leave and sort of having some fun on on the station, and that's when the station gets attacked, and all of the exterior shots that they filmed in Dubai, wherever it was, or on the station, are all all take place in this space station, so this thing is big, huge, like. I don't know how big it is, but it would be probably comparable to the original Death Star, if that's true, given the size Sounds of the Enterprise right. compared Sounds to Sounds about right. Like, this thing's a monster. So, anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. And, Stuart, it's time to do the news! You keep telling me so you. I have some interesting news that's uh, popped up. So, a uh, Space City Comic Con happened in uh, Houston, Texas this weekend. Why didn't you go to that one, Michael? Power- you know, I might be able to go to that one. Sorry, Eugene, I couldn't go to Harrisburg, but I think I can go to Texas. <laughs> You're an ass. Anyway, Come um... out the hour. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is uh, interesting. Uh, su- su- supposedly, the um, the Sons of Anarchy cast were going to have a re- reunion there since the show stopped in 2014. However, um, all the checks that they got to get paid for were, got bounced. Ooh. And they were not happy about it. Ooh. Yeah. They, uh, they went into the promoter's office to the band payment, where the promoter en- ended up calling the cops because he thought he was being held hostage. <laughs> really? That's, uh... Yeah. That's intense. Hashtag America? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, it's Texas. It's not America, okay? <laughs> Hashtag Texas. Texas Yay! is its own. Texas is its own thing. You can't well, blame us. The rest of us for Texas. Yeah, the, a lot of the northern states say that about the southern states. Just saying. Well, no, specifically Texas. Remember, it was its own country originally. Yeah. So anyway, just like Tasmania. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we, we don't mention Tasmania. Anyway, let's do it. <laughs> so, what happened? Have they been paid, or are they just in jail? Because Texas does uh, both. That's all I've been. That's all I can find in so so Aww, far. That's boring. You can't leave me hanging like that. You can't give me a potential hostage situation and say, "Yeah, that's all we know." <sighs> yeah, David just wants people to be arrested or you know executed or something like that. It's Texas. Execute order sixty six. It's Texas. People are either <laughs> arrested or executed, depending 
I'm not going to finish that sentence. I'm going to leave that sentence alone. <laughs> it goes in the naughty corner and it stays there. Let's do it. Yes. Do the news. <laughs> Save me. I'm drowning. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, there's a whole bunch of um, uh, uh, stuff. Oh, God, that involves Game of Thrones news and stuff happened. Yeah, I don't know why my head's not working. It's a, stuff it's... happened. Great, thank you for that news. <laughs> what about what about Doctor Who? Any Doctor Who news? Yes, Jack is back. Woo! Yes, that's what and, I was freaking out about. Like, and so I saw busy. that. Yeah, Missy too, but I'm more excited about Jack. I mean, because, <laughs> like, like, imagine Jack flirting with Capaldi. That's uh, just a disturbing I, image. I see the exact <laughs> opposite happen. I see him looking at Capaldi with sort of disgust and contempt. Just like, you're not the doctor. Exactly, How? But, he's so used, but he's so used to the doctor, so that's my point. Like, imagine that, just that, like, connection they're going to make there. I wonder it's if, so weird. I wonder if it's going to be like River. Where he doesn't recognize him. He doesn't know. That would be really good. So, but I, I would feel it'd be very. They hopefully they won't go that way because that's a very because they did it with River. It would feel a bit rehashed. Oh look, here's an older yes, character. The that... Capaldi's really looked. At... What? But Capaldi's really like what, a big part of the thing with River is that looking back at the consequences of who he is, and that's been a lot of this series, this season. The last season of this Christmas special was that, you know, a lot of the consequences of what he's done as Doctor, who he is. And, you know, as we all know, Jack is immortal now, basically. And he's not necessarily always happy about that. And I think it would be great if the Doctor realizes just what's been, just how much harm has come to Jack through what his, him and Rose did. Yeah. And it'd be interesting if it was, say, like a million years in the future or something. Yeah. I think I'm a head in a jar. So, anyway, it's gonna it's, it's definitely gonna be interesting where they take that. Let's do I it. wish they would have River and Jack. Yeah. I'd like to, no no no. Yeah, uh, I worked out how they're bringing him back. Clara's gonna regenerate into him. Please no. Please <laughs> please. <laughs> no. He's gonna regenerate right, into uh, Clara. So Alright, so Captain America Civil War is now the highest grossing movie of 2016 at the US box office. Yes, it actually beat Deadpool. Yeah, it did, it's it, fantastic. It didn't just beat Deadpool, it slaughtered Deadpool. Well, so. that's probably because of the age limit with Deadpool. Yeah. More so. Exactly. But even then, Deadpool still did a fantastic job with the R restriction. Exactly. So... Yeah. Let's do it. I honestly don't. I honestly don't think the R rating means as much to the public as it used to. Yeah, it's very I, think, I, think more, I think more and more kids are going to see these movies. Yeah. That's because oh, their I got some, um, Oh, I've got Star Trek news. Um, Voyager novelist uh, Kirsten uh, Bayer, I think that's how you say her last name. Yeah. Joins the the TV show. Ooh. This is. The 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 crew that they have for this series looks spectacular. Yeah. Mm. Well, it really really needed to. Like the writers, executive producers. Considering how much hate yeah, it's and, got, and it's got from the fans because of the Abrams stuff, Star Trek really needed to come and and into the swing. Well, that and the online access. Exactly. I I mean I'm very hopeful for this series based on the writers and producers. I mean they have Gene Roddenberry's son. So. Well, maybe we'll hear more about it at Hawaii Con, which Rod Roddenberry's going to, if I remember correctly. Check it. Make sure you check out Hawaii Con because Hawaii Con's awesome. Anyway, yeah, that... maybe, maybe I can go to that too. Yeah, go, we'll, we'll send you that one. <laughs> Just <laughs> e yes, please, everywhere that Eugene isn't, everywhere that Eugene isn't, we'll send Michael. <laughs> Con a week. So anyway, except we don't have that money. Eugene doesn't know. Anyway, that's it for this week. <laughs> um, Ken, the last couple of seconds of the show, so I'll do the outro, as always. 
Make sure you check out facebook.com slash save sci-fi, facebook.com slash save sci-fi podcast, facebook.com slash the deadliest fandom, all of which fall under the save sci-fi banner. Um, and, uh, are awesome. They're awesome. Just make sure you check them all out. They're good. Check out, get, but don't, uh, don't forget to check out Garrison 7. Goddamn, 17 seconds. Um, and we will catch you next time. Uh. Bye, all. Bye. Bye. Hi. So, yeah. There's also, there's yeah. another one that I forgot. Oh, uh, if I remember in time. The nobility? Nobility? Yeah, check out nobility! Yeah, check out nobility!